Episode 7, Transformation. Nezuko's transformation, I'm guessing. She joins the ranks of the upper demons. She, after she stomps the hell out of Scarf Demon. Very high level. She looks a lot older. Oh, she, she likes it. <laughs> she, she enjoys this. I wonder if she also has any of Yuzan's memories. Maybe there's a key insight she could develop. Haven't you tormented us enough, <laughs> ghost of our dead siblings? The demon is coming out. I let her do it for a little while. Oh, she is rattled. Is she holding herself together together with blood? This is great at all. Wow, wow! Nezuko developed the power of air combos from within her box. This is great and all, but why couldn't you have done this when Rogoku was around? <laughs> Though I get the feeling that what they're doing is implying she's growing. Her power is increasing, like she's not fully developed yet. And it's sort of a growth thing. She hasn't been practicing or training or anything like that. But this is not the same Nezuko. She's been sacrificing her speech points for attack and dexterity. Oh yeah, she has the thirst, right? It's not that she doesn't desire it. It's that she's able to... Hold it in, but she's sort of on a on a tear right now. I know she won't, but what would Tanjiro do if she did? Ah, this is sort of rough. She didn't do it, but that was an attempt at it. That makes things a little bit more difficult now. Gotta be careful. A door has been opened. The sun's getting real low, big guy. <laughs> oh yeah, and her also. It's a lot to deal with. Run, if you can. That was great timing. Did he just get her? Did he kill her? Yeah, they, he sort of promised in front of all of them this wouldn't happen. She's still alive. The disrespect turning his back on her. <laughs> oh, what? Did he get her? He did get her. <laughs> Wow, what a low-key way to dispatch with her. We call this title card Tanjiro's Injured Shoulder. One for the books. I feel like that did not require super hearing, but okay. <laughs> that huge explosion. This can't be it though, right? Is she actually gone? He did that. With a blade. A sun blade. Is he actually going to sing her a lullaby? <laughs> what is this? He's a man of many talents, but singing, not one of them. There it is. <laughs> Tantra's not the only one who can have useful family flashbacks. I mean, it comes up less often just because she's a demon and doesn't talk, but she experienced the same thing. Well, not exactly the same thing, but the same loss that he did. I mean, who knows what's going on in her her internal world? It's sort of hard to tell where she's at because of the lack of speech, like I said. But there's no reason to assume she isn't fully cognizant of what's going on. <laughs> she literally reverted to child size. <laughs> He's so casual about this. I actually gave her a very unflashy death, which in some ways is the ultimate punishment from Uzui, from his perspective. Wouldn't even give you the satisfaction of an epic death. <laughs> he has a point. I mean, checkmate. Oh no. <laughs> Isn't she reverting to some weird childhood state, speaking of which. Right, right. This is not it. Feels like it can't be it. It was too unflashy. But now would be a great time to like strike. You know, if you're gonna do that. There's enough, another one living inside of her? What is happening? And now there's two of them. That went well. Yeah. This is mirroring the pattern of the last arc. Well, there's another demon lurking, who's the actual boss. But this time they're both alive. But they're both upper six, right? They're part of the same entity. This is a direction I really did not expect, though. 
He's a big dude. Oh, he does indeed. <laughs> He's got three wives. I heard she really did revert to like a baby. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> He's having a great time. <laughs> nice to see you too. Best greeting. You might be alright if you clean up a little bit. <laughs> Duh. Really hitting him with that jealousy. Jealousy bomb. I know. And they all have really, really big hearts. Real solid girls. As far as his flexes go, that was that was top tier from Uzui. But Ribcage here had it coming. He sort of revealed all his insecurities. It's great to meet you. Here are all my insecurities for you to exploit. Uzui not wasting any time at all to kick him while he's down, but probably creating some kind of advantage depending on how he reacts. I think for most people, rage probably works to your detriment, but you never know, especially because they're actually physically fighting. What it probably does though is make Uzui his chief target in some way, maybe protecting the people around him. But also he told no lies. Yeah, this is the rage that makes you stronger, I guess. Oh, some really quick thinking. That's his ranking, right? His life comes last. His bloodbending! That seems like a losing battle from the slash of liquid. Yeah, that seems to be a secret of the upper ranking demons. They're not vulnerable in the same way normal demons are. He really could be a great mentor for Snitsu. He can probably fight a lot more freely now that he knows his wives, wives are fine. But the fight just got that much harder. Yeah, yeah, sort of gathered that. That was interesting. I did not expect that to happen. I was thinking it, would, it was going to be a big showdown with Tanjiro and the girl, and then they were going to defeat her, but another demon, or maybe even Muzan himself, was going to show up. To that extent, I knew she wasn't the main boss, let's call it, of this arc, but also she is in a weird way. And it's funny and kind of great, too, because I feel like the characters are sort of finding their legs. It's like, wow, maybe this is a battle we can actually win. Nezuko turns out to be really powerful. Tanjiro is working on his son stuff. Zenitsu's asleep. Uzui's badass. But... I feel like the tides just shifted this episode. Because that all hinged on them beating one demon, and other two of them, sort of. Uzui looking pretty, pretty great, pretty badass though. He may not be setting his heart ablaze exactly, but he damn sure is flashy. Nin Nin! Hit me with it, Tanjiro. Oh, this is gonna be a sad Taisho fact. Tanjiro <laughs> doing PR for Nezuko after this disaster of an episode for her. I swear she's fine. I, I swear she's great. If you just get to know her. <laughs> yeah, she may have lunged at humans. She would never have gone through with it, though. She's a sweetheart, deep down. Look at her kawaii face, etc. Aside from the villain reveal, I feel like there's something more significant that took place in this episode, which is Nezuko, speaking of which. It's an interesting door to open, because up to this point, she has been sort of this docile demon that everyone knows won't hurt humans, and we can safely vouch for, but this episode really calls that into question, and raises some possibilities that I had kind of dismissed. Like, I thought it was going to be a little bit more on the, you know, it's my my demon sister and she's good side the end but no actually it's possible that she will be a major source of conflict she's getting more powerful by the day it seems pretty sure that's what they're implying it's not like she's just getting more powerful as the plot demands it there seems to be an actual progression here that is intentional in terms of her power ability and scaling and so what is the extent of that where does that lead and what does that mean for tanjiro who is so desperately intent on reverting her not only you know specifically just for the sake of his sister but for the sake of his own soul in a way because she represents everything that he has left behind. All the tragedy of his life has sort of been boiled down and encapsulated into saving Nezuko as his means of coping, it seems to me. So for her to shift towards being an upper demon and having that darkness, he's kind of playing with fire in a way himself. There's a major danger for Tanjiro internally. Whether or not he can handle this, whether or not he can look at it accurately, whether or not he'll be forced into tough choices that could potentially destroy him in a way that nothing else has emotionally destroyed him so far, even the death of Rengoku. Of course, there's potential for this to be a really great thing for them, having an upper demon level demon on their side. 
but that doesn't seem like it's going to be all there is. It doesn't seem like she's just going to be an ally like she has been this far. I could also imagine this putting her on Muzan's radar in a big way. There's clearly something unique about her, and he talked about failing to reach her, but we know he's all about a couple things. One of them is ultimate power, keeping a strong batch of soldiers to do his bidding, and also more recently, destroying Tanjiro. And so this seems like a, a major gaping weakness in Tanjiro's defenses, as well as a major strategic advantage for Muzan that's right for the taking. So it opens up some interesting doors. I'm kind of curious to see where this goes from here with Nezuko. Let's go.